Hi guys! So, today I'm going to do another silhouette and this time I'm going to try using the hair dryer, or blow dryer, um, to do the Dutch pour where you blow it around. And I always wanted to do it with the silhouettes, so I'm going to give it a try because I think it would be really pretty. So just as usual for applying my pre-cut vinyls, uh, I just pulled it off, placed it where I wanted it, used a little bit of Liquidex gloss varnish to seal it down underneath and above the edge, let it dry fully, and now it's ready. And make sure you don't put any gloss on this line for this edge, just on the silhouette edge. So it's pretty much ready to go. I've mixed up some really pretty colors. So we have Folk Arts Color Shift. This is the Purple Flash, which is super pretty. And we have Craft Smarts Metallic Ultra Bright. This is the Pink Tourmaline. So I think that's going to be pretty with that. And then I just mixed up a little bit of Deep Yellow Artist Loft, which I... So purple and yellow will make a muddy color, but if they don't mix, they should be fine. So I might add this in drops on top, we'll see, and then blow it after, adding the purple and pink. And then I just have my white to flood. So if you guys are interested in how I mix my paints, I have an ebook for beginners. Shows my whole formula for mixing with links and everything. Just easier than me having to write it every time, guys. So, greatly appreciate you guys checking that out on my Crafty Gen Art Store. And on my Crafty Gen Art Store, you can also check out my pre-cut vinyls if you'd like to give it a try. And I greatly appreciate everybody that's been ordering them. Thank you so much. I hope you guys are having a blast creating with them. So... Alright, so first things first, I'm going to flood the canvas with white on this side. And I, pour, I made quite a bit of white in case I needed extra. And you could just use the popsicle stick to move it around or a palette knife. Make sure you get all your edges. And because this is sealed, I'm going to come right up to the edge here of the silhouette. And everybody gave a great tip for tightening canvases on my, from my last video there with the chakras. Is that if you just spritz a little bit of water on the back and then blow dry it or heat it, it'll tighten the canvas up. So thank you guys for sharing that with everyone. Greatly appreciate the handy tips. And I like to just make sure to cover the edges so that the color goes right over. It's easier for it to go right over when you make sure that the paint has reached all the edges. So I'm just using my finger here because I just want to be sure I don't go over that edge. What I could have done is put painter's tape along the rest of the canvas, but I'm just going to be careful. <laughs> There we go. It's looking pretty good. Alright. I need paper towel. Because it's a little bit messy. And my silicone cups came in, guys. So that's awesome. <laughs> Finally. So super stoked. I think I'm going to have... Because I want to do... I think I might have it from up here come down. So Ooh, so pretty. Very, very pretty. Alright, let's use the pink a little bit. And some people pre mix and put it in tubes, which you can totally do. I just never too sure. I like to mix different kinds of colors and stuff, so I usually like to uh, save that. 
Ooh, that's going to be pretty, I think. Now, I'm not going to put the yellow on yet because I don't want it to mix, but I might add it after and spritz it around. So, I'm going to move these out of the way and grab my blow dryer. And I'm going to put it on cool. So, not, so it's going to get a little loud. So, I'm going to blow it and then I'll come back. liking this one so I'm just gonna torch a bit get some cells to pop but there's a ton of cells popping right now and what I'm really gonna love is that I'm gonna have cells right up against the silhouette so when I pull that off it's gonna be really pretty now what I wanted to do is add some yellow in here just as a little bit of an accent so I do have an air duster like you'd get for your computer to maybe <clears throat> get some really fine little little air bursts. I'm not sure I might end up flicking paint any everywhere but I'm gonna give it a little bit of a try guys because I think I think it'll look kind of cool. Let's just give it a whirl. Oh! Yep, don't use the air blower. <laughs> that got paint everywhere. Okay, good mental note. <laughs> that is way too strong. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm just going to wipe off a few things. Alright guys, so that's a good mental note not to use an air duster. It's way too strong. <laughs> but I could just, I just blew a little bit. Uh, I could use a straw. I think I'm going to leave it and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with a paint marker and do some extra highlighting with it. But the cells are really pretty. They came out really gorgeous. I like the lacing that's happening in here. I think it looks pretty cool and I think it's going to be pretty cool because it's kind of her hair coming blown in the back so I think that's going to look really pretty. 
Now, I'm just going to let this one dry, and then I'll bring you guys back, and we're going to take this off, and I might paint this one of the pretty purple or pinks from inside the painting. Alright, so everything's dry now guys, even this paint skin, and I think it turned out really, really pretty. There's some really cool cells in here, and the best part is because I'm working on my lowly leafy silicone mat, I can just peel this off super easy, so I'll show you guys. Look at that. <laughs> Boom, there's a paint skin. A really, really pretty one. This one's actually big enough that I could probably stretch it over a journal to make a journal cover. And it's got some nice shimmer in it. So, uh, the way that I keep my paint skins, guys, is I just use parchment paper. And I just put a layer of parchment paper, put a paint skin, put parchment paper over top, put another paint skin, separates them, keeps them actually fairly, like... It doesn't, they don't dry out in parchment paper, so that's kind of nice. Because um, sometimes when you keep paint skins, they'll dry out. And then when you go to try and use them, they crack and they're brittle. But keeping them layered on top of each other with parchment paper in between keeps them really in good condition. So just a handy tip for you guys. All right, I'm going to move this. And if you wanted uh, your own giant for Jumbo or Mega silicone mats, you can use my code GEN5. There's a link in the description. And super easy to just peel it off, just like that, guys. So I'm going to put this away. And I'm going to bring in the silhouette. So this is the one. There we go. Just making sure you guys are in focus. I love all the pretty cells that happened in this one. Super pretty. I love that, you know, just blowing it around with the hair dryer worked really good. So, and it's all nice and dry. And we even got cells all the way up to the edge of the face. So that'll look really pretty. And I just have to remove the vinyl. Like you saw in my last videos, uh, if you just go slow, sometimes the on cheaper canvases the gesso will peel up like that, but everything's fixable. It's going to be hard to see the difference because it's white with white, but there is an edge here that I can paint up against. So you could paint this side first, but I never really know what color I want to paint it. <laughs> so I usually tend to leave it. But I like that you can get a nice edge, and I like that I can get cells all the way up to the edge of the face. I'm just going to take some of that off. Gorgeous. I even love this star effect right here. I did get some paint leakage under. But no worries, I'm going to show you guys how I fix it, because it is raised a bit. And then, obviously, we just fix this with some gesso. Alright guys, so you can see here is where the paint leaked out. Um, it sometimes happens. Sometimes I don't always let the liquid gloss dry quickly, so sometimes the paint does get under. But it's an easy fix. So. Um, you can use some sandpaper, just some hand sandpaper, support the bottom of the canvas, and then sand that down till it's flat, and then you just paint right over it. A quicker way, I use my Dremel. <laughs> uh, I just have a sanding bit, and all I'm going to do is just sand off the sharp edge from the paint leakage, and then I'm just going to paint right over it. So I'm going to sand it, and we'll go after that.
that's pretty much how I do it. I just run my finger over it, make sure it's flat, make sure that everything is nice and smooth again. So that way when I paint back over it won't leave any bumps or or any indication that there was ever any paint there. And now I'm just going to pour a little bit of gloss out to fix these holes. And grab a paintbrush. Because I can just take it from the bottle. <laughs> Don't need too much. I'm just going to fill in the holes, just like my chakra video where I show you how to repair. And then you just let it dry, and it's like you never had any issues. So this is gesso that I'm using to fix up the holes. Voila! So I might have to do another once it's dry, another pass with a bit of gesso to fill that in, but other than that, it's perfectly perfectly fine to keep painting over. So it works really good. And with the pre-cut vinyls, you can get these cells all the way up to your silhouette there, which is really pretty. So I love what happened here in the cheek, and even this star here, right next to the eye. Super pretty. So I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to come back and paint the negative side and then we'll show you the final piece. Alright, so this is dry. As you can see, the gesso has completely covered the holes and everything's repaired. Um, this is just a, if you guys use cheaper canvases, usually with the more expensive ones you won't have too many issues, So, or if you do it on wood. Also, I'd like to mention, guys, I got these super cute little silicone cups. I'll have a link in the description. But these work really great for if you just want to pour a little bit of paint into the cup. And I actually hadn't even opened this one. I had <laughs> I had just unscrewed the top of it instead to get the paint out. But there is a little bit left in here that I'm going to use to paint the other side. So I left the bottle sitting towards its cap. There we go. So this is the color flash, purple flash. So these little silicone cups are absolutely amazing for if you just need a little bit in here, like this one I put some Liquidex gloss that I had used for here and then you can just peel this out and voila your cup is good to go again so no wastage no using plastic it's great so now I'm just gonna hand paint the negative side this is gonna take several coats because the as you can see the purple flash color is fairly translucent so it requires many coats to get it to be nice thick layer and I use the edge as a guide to just paint up to which works out really great And I could even do this as a gradient on the negative side if I wanted to, like purple to white, because I have all these beautiful cells right up against the silhouette. And I also sprayed the back of my canvas with a little bit of water, because this one was very not well stretched. But I might have to re-stretch it after. So I would just take the staples out of the side and restretch the canvas because it wasn't very well stretched to begin with, but for all purposes right now. Now some people have asked, uh, you could add a little bit of Floetrol to this side, but 
I find it's extremely difficult to paint with it up against the silhouette to actually follow along the lines and stuff. I had used quite a bit of Floetrol when I tried it and it just became a giant puddle depending on your canvas as well. I prefer to hand paint. I don't mind if you see a few paint brushes. I mean it, it's an artwork. You're gonna see them with most paintings anyways. If you wanted an absolutely fine finish with no brush marks you could use the positive side of the vinyl put mask it over here and spray paint the negative side if you wanted to as well that's another option for using the positive and negative sides you might have to do a video on that one too or you just try it out and stuff obviously they won't have this beautiful purple flash color and spray paint but they would have other colors, lots of other colors for sure. So I'm just using the edge that's created by the raised paint. Okay, so basically that's just a base layer. <laughs> this is going to take probably several coats in order to get the true solid color of the purple flash, but I think it'll look really pretty because it'll have just as dark as this will, so it'll look really, really gorgeous on this side. You could paint a scene on this side, you could paint a sunset, you can do whatever you like for the negative space side. I have some ideas I want to try out for adding some embellishment in here. So I'm going to finish this side and then work on that side after. Alright, so after many layers <laughs> of the purple flash, I got good coverage. It still needs a little bit more, so here's a pro tip. Uh, I had to go and buy this huge bottle of it on Amazon, but I mean, I'll use it because it's such a pretty color. So next time what I should have done was I should have painted, a, like mixed up a similar purple, just with regular acrylic paint, and done a layer of that because I could, probably could have got thicker coverage because this color shift purple flash is super thin. So it took me, this is almost like five layers of it. So if I had mixed up a bit of purple, done a flat layer, and then put the purple flash over top, I think it would, I wouldn't have had to use so much of it. So just a little tip <laughs> for those of you that are wanting to try it out. And I love how this turned out. It's super cool with the uh, blowing it around with the hair dryer. So I think it looks really cool with the blowing around the cells and stuff. This is all dry now and it's super pretty. It's like your hair is blowing in the wind and stuff and I love all the purple cellular we got in here. I don't even mind the yellow that I got in here and I'm going to add a bit of embellishment. So here's my idea. <laughs> so I have some embroidery thread now you can pick this up at Michael's. Uh, you can get like 260 colors of it on Amazon. I'll have a link in the description so you could go with like all these crazy colors for super cheap on Amazon. But I did pick up some embroidery thread and I'm going to do some French knots and some little flowers in there. So the trick with embroidery thread, I'm going to do it on the purple here, is it comes nice and thick. You could use it thick, but all I do is I separate the strands. So you could do three at a time, which is what I have here on my needle. And what I'm going to do is I want to put the little French knots right here. So I'm just going to poke right through the canvas just like that. I have a knot already on the bottom 
of the thread. And then a French knot, maybe I should zoom you guys in. Okay guys, so all I did was I poked the needle with the embroidery thread through the canvas and pulled it all the way through. I had a knot on the end so it stayed in place. And for the French knot, all you have to do is twist the embroidery yarn around the needle and poke it back through the canvas somewhere near the entrance and hold it really taut, so nice and tight, near the needle. And then pull the needle back through with the thread as you can see me doing here. And you just kind of pull it down a little bit but not so that it goes all the way down. You just leave a little bit up and that's basically a French knot for you. So I did three of these and then I decided to move on to doing some roses. So I'll show you guys that right now. Alright guys, so I'm just going to show you the rose technique. There are lots of great um, videos on this. There's one from Beverly McLough, McLullough. <laughs> I hope I'm saying that right. Anyways, I'll have a link up here for her uh, rose technique that she gives a great tutorial on on YouTube. So, but for embroidery. So basically, she's saying to draw a circle, do five spokes. I'm not going to, you could draw with pencil on your acrylic painting, but I'm just going to leave it as is, and I'm just going to guesstimate a little bit. So I already pulled through once, and this time I'm using six strands, so the whole embroidery floss instead of using just now this is where it's tricky because you gotta gotta figure out where to come back through <laughs> I'm gonna have to take a look I need to see where that hole is there we go okay sorry about that so yeah you do five spokes from the center out in a circle as long as they're kind of the same distance. So with five spokes, just kind of go here. Two, and I need to flip it over to see where I went in. So I go back in the same spot in the center. I pull it through, I go back out. The nice part about painting on canvas is that you could do a lot of embroidery and stuff with needles and that, like you can embellish your paintings. Different things, one, two, three, we'll need four and then five. This is going to be a big flower. <laughs> One thing she didn't specify was how much thread. So I just kind of cut off a bunch and if I have to I will just tie it off and cut some more. And then we just go like this. Pull it back through. There we go. So there we have five spokes, kind of in a circle. Not too bad. <laughs> I just go back over, go back through the middle, like so. And then I'm going to go under, over is the technique for the rows. So under one spoke, over the next one. So I would go under this one, and then I would go over that one in a circle. So I went over, so I go under this one, it would be over that one, trying not to get it tangled. So this is under here. I mean it takes a bit of time, but I think it's going to look really pretty. Obviously I'm going to you know, it's something to work on and 
just a different way of embellishing your paintings under here over back under <laughs> trying to remember and then it says to keep it kind of you know you don't want it super tight but you just kind of pull a little bit towards the middle of the spokes just like so and what you want to do is you keep going around in circles until you get until you cover the the spokes completely and that way you will get a rose at the end oh, don't pull it through the circle because you'll get a knot Now I cut off a lot of string because I wanted to make sure I had enough, but I probably don't need quite as much. This is going to be an over, this is under. Sorry guys, that's what I was afraid of. I had a huge knot <laughs> that happened. So I had to undo everything and try and get the knot out. But, I'm going to put it down on the table here so it's a little bit easier to work with. And I'm just going to keep going. So, key to remember guys, over, under, over, under with the spokes. And don't get it tied in a knot. <laughs> guys and that's a super pretty rose I'm just going to go underneath and push back under and then I can probably do another one next to it or you can tie it off on the back I'm just gonna leave it because I'll probably be doing a lot more I think it looks super pretty. I'm going to bring you guys down and show you. So that's what it's looking like so far. I only have like one rose and a few little French knots. I'm just going to bring you guys in. See how super cute it is. See how close I can get. Oh. So that is the cute little French knots right there and the rose. I think it looks pretty cute. So I'm going to do a whole bunch. Here she is again over in a bunch of different areas. But I think she's going to look really pretty. I love her already. So like I said guys, it's going to take me a while to do a whole bunch of these roses and flowers all over in her hair, in the cells, and really embellish this piece to the fullest. So I'm going to work on that and then when it's done, I'll show it to you guys. Uh, in the meantime, thank you everybody for subscribing, liking, commenting on my videos. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for using my links or my discount codes. I hope you guys are enjoying all your products and stuff and thank you to everybody who's buying my silhouettes, pre-cut silhouettes and visiting my Crafty Gen art store. So you guys are the best and I hope you are all having a blast creating. Thanks guys.